festival. So they are preparing the rice wine, and uh, on the first day of the new year, they will visit their relatives. Everyone will drink a cup of uh, the rice wine. So what's the secret of uh, this uh, rice wine? Today we will find out the secret with you at local people's house. Just now we mentioned the Tu Lo as uh, the traditional building of Hakas. And uh, there are um, many Tulos around. Many of uh, the Tulos have a uh, history of uh, a century. And the residents still settle here, still live in the Tulo. Uh, you see, these are clay. And it's very magic, it's mysterious. But these are not simply clay. It's a mixture. So this uh, building is very solid. It's uh, just like the castle to prevent the enemies from outside. Uh, because hackers in, in the ancient times, they would like to gather, and they would like to live together. So like uh, their daughters, their grand uh, grandchildren, they live together in one building. And there are several Tulos here. We prepared a video for you. You can see from the sky, from the video, and uh, know about the magnificence of uh, Tulo. So from the video, you can see the magnificence uh, and the rising of uh, Tulo. And now we are at uh, the brew house in this village. And uh, this Tulo is called Yucheng. And this Tulo is uh, one of the main brew houses in this village. Actually, many families, almost all the families here have their brew houses. So there are some more popular brew houses. So they have uh, developed into the most uh, popular brew houses locally. So this one is uh, the main brew house in this village. There are uh, many brew pots and the jars here. And now we are inside the Tulo. We can see the structure of the Tulo. It's uh, very high, and there are several stories. This one is a square Tulo. It has four stories. For the families live here, the first uh, story is always the kitchen. And on the second floor is the Bounce to store the grains and rice. And the, on the third floor is their bedroom. So, so the two low is always square and round. And now we can see some people are busy doing some work. 
This is the local brew house. They've been starting to brew the rice wine. Hello. She's the host of uh, this too low. So many of the ladies here can make the rice wine. Yes, most of uh, the people in the brew houses are ladies. So her name is uh, Yobi Dan. People call her Abi. So she will take us to have a look of uh, the rice wine of Hakas. So let's talk about the first step. Come here and I will introduce it to you. Is this the kitchen? Uh, this is the brew house because uh, it needs to be very clean. So we separate uh, a room for the brewing. I'm the sixth generation of uh, brewers in my family. So it's a traditional business in my family. This one is the rice wine. Firstly, we choose uh, the distinguished uh, stinking rice. And uh, we need uh, to soak it into the water for 12 hours. So you can see the rice is uh, soft. Yeah, you need to soak it until it's uh, soft. And you really need to choose the very good stinky rice. And after soaking, we need to steam it. Uh, this is about uh, 60 caddies of uh, stinky rice. We soak it from yesterday evening. So how much uh, wine it can make? It's about uh, 35 uh, caddies. So when do you normally start to make the rice wine? I heard that it's after winter solstice. Actually, in my family, it's in four seasons. But actually, every year after the Double Nines uh, Festival is the best period to make rice wine. And we use uh, the mountainous uh, heat spring before the Double Nines double nice Day. And after Double Nines Day, because there are sufficient uh, rain waters, so we will use uh, the natural rain. So let's uh, have a look of uh, the step of uh, steaming. My brew house is a traditional manual brew house. So we do the whole procedure manually. And this one is uh, the clay oven. It's very traditional. So I've never uh, used the sticks to catch fire. Do you want to have a try? And we use the wood bucket. And this is uh, good. well well done. You see, it's uh, shining. Uh, we use uh, the firewood and uh, we steam it out of water. And uh, we take it out. We just uh, leave it and uh, cool it off. And then we will continue the next step. Have you washed your hands? If you wash your hands, you can touch the rice and have a try. So you can see for the precious uh, stinky rice, they can make a very fragrant rice. This one is the bamboo sieve, and it's made of bamboo. You just uh, put the rice above it and cool it off. 
So how long will you uh, cool it off until very low temperature of the rice? You can feel it with your hands. If it's not too hot, we can mix it uh, with the yeast. Yeah, yeast is very important. Wine yeast, right? We use wine yeast to ferment the the sticky rice. What does it look like, though? I'll get it for you. Apparently, it smells extremely good, and it looks very transparent. Firstly, we have to cook the sticky rice, and then put it on the bamboo sieve to mix it, mix it with the yeast. It looks like it will take a while for the sticky rice to cool down. OK, this is our homemade wine yeast. I use natural yeast and um, other material to make this yeast. Each household has different wine yeast. That's why we make different tastes. You see that different household has different recipe to make the wine yeast. Actually, in this village, only us make wine yeast because it's very complicated to make it. So as you mentioned, there there's some um, natural fungus. And we also add, um, add other crops inside it. So you need to firstly wait the sticky rice to cool down. You cannot mix it with the yeast when it's still too hot. OK, let's wait a while for it to cool down. You see over there, there, there are some um, sticky rice that has already mixed with the yeast. Some it's white yeast and some it's red yeast. So we wait for the fermentation for a few hours. And then you can see that some of the rice wine is already coming out. You see the bubble, and it is very watery. That means it's already fermented. So currently, it's just started to ferment. That's why you can see all of the rice wine is coming out, going up. If you want to drink this fermented sticky rice, it's the sweetest time. And the alcoholic strength is just 2 to 3 degree. You will never get drunk with this drink. I also noticed that you even use duvet to cover the sticky rice. Yes. Uh, at the beginning, 24 hours, you need to use the duvet to cover the fermentation because you need to keep it warm so that um, this fermentation process will not cool down rapidly. Otherwise, you will harm the process of fermentation. If the sticky rice got too cold, the fermentation process will not start. OK. So this is the fermented sticky rice. And it's almost swelled. And you see that the sticky rice wine is going down rather than going up. When the whole pot is full, then we need to take it out. You see that apparently the bubble is going down rather than going up. How long does it take to ferment the sticky rice? Usually, it 
we we need to ferment it according to the room temperature. Currently, is around twenty degree. So, if it is uh, fifteen to sixteen uh, degrees, then it takes one month. But if it is in summertime, it only takes half month to ferment. So it all depends on the room temperature. Each season, in each season, the fermentation takes different period of time. I think that one is almost done, right? No, not exactly. These are already fermenting. That's why we use duvet to cover them. If there are some dirt or dust go inside of the uh, fermentation process, then um, the whole taste will go sour. That's why we cover it to keep it clean and also keep it warm. And clean is the most important thing. Because in the natural fermentation process, if you don't have any dust go inside, the fermentation will go very well. I also heard that during your brew brewing process, you cannot say any curse words or negative words in front uh, during the process. Yes, um, in our Hakka words, if we want, we have all kinds of festive or celebrative um, celebrations to do, then we will brew rice wine to celebrate these events. That's why during the process of brewing, you should not curse or say any negative things in front of the process. Otherwise, you will be unfortunate. So the next step will be pressing. Do join me here. You see that this is a textile bag. You see that there are already very a lot of um, wine here. And there is only the skin of the rice now. So you put that whole content inside the bag. And you see that there is another part underneath. This is called filtering, filtering um, step. You use your hand, press the bag, and then the one will go up, go down. You see, it has a very beautiful color because I added red yeast inside it. That's why it looks a little bit pinky. So you have to filter, filter it to separate the lee and the wine. When you have already filtered the wine, can we drink it directly? No, it's still just half made. Okay, firstly, you need to put all of the wine inside these jars. Okay, this is bamboo shoot and the bamboo shoot skin. The bamboo shoot skin is to protect the bamboo shoot. And then this is bamboo skin. So firstly, if you put it under water, this skin will be very soft and it has a very special fragrant. Because it has this special fragrant, uh, we used it very often to we, we, we use it to make a lot of food such as um, sticky ball, etc. And it it's very natural. All of the fragrant are natural. And it has a natural smell, natural fragrant of the bamboo shoot. During the when we store it in the warehouse, this bamboo shoot skin will emit a kind of very special and good fragrant. 
Is it fireproof though? Will it get fired? Catch fire? Since we have already soaked it in the water, it will not that easy to get to catch fire. We pay attention to technology a lot. So let's have a look of uh, simmering the wine. So after you seal the jar, then we will take it uh, to the simmering house. Well, these pins are from the trees. And we use it to simmer the wine. So per firstly, we put the glass on the ground. And this one is called a simmering house. There are many ingredients, many materials, like the grains. These are the shell of the rice, of the grains. So what do we use it for? We burn it. Is it uh, too hot inside? Can we enter? In? So we can see these jars are almost uh, buried in the green shells. The grass is uh, on the ground. And then we send, uh, we put the green shells Shades the simmer stuff here. Uh, these are the pine needles. Uh, because it's very easy to catch on fire, we use it to start to catch fire. These are different from my imagination. I thought we use the very big fire just like uh, to steam the rice on the clay oven. Yes, you are right. When you are steaming the rice, you need big fire. But if you use big fire to simmer the wine, it will be very dangerous. The fragrance will fade away. And there's a grain shells. Takes a slow process of uh, catching fire. You can't see the fire because the fire is buried in the grain shells. Be careful. Yes, it's hidden fire. And this process can also kill the bacteria. It takes 48 hours, and the temperature is about 120 Celsius degrees. So is it spoiled? Yes, but it's very slow. And after the bacteria are c killed, the color will change. So this process is only for bacterial killing? No. This one is to improve the fragrance. Because after brewing, there is uh, only alcohol smell of uh, the wine. And after this process, the fragrance will be better. And we use the stones to seal the jar. You see just now the bamboo shoot garments. They are very soft and weak. So you need to put uh, the heavy stones above it. Yes, because the temperature is very high. So after it's uh, spoiled, the pressure will, will be very high. Yes, that's why we press it with uh, the stones. Will the pressure high enough uh, to kick the stone up? Yeah, if uh, that happens, uh, the whole jar will be exploded. Uh, that's uh, really dangerous. Actually, this process is dangerous. You said it uh, takes uh, 48 hours. Do you need to be here for the whole period? No, we just inspect it. We monitor it every two hours because uh, it's very slow. 
We monitor it every two hours. If there is uh, even very small fire, we will pull it out. Even during the night time, we check it for two every two hours. So this process is uh, tiring, actually. So what do you need to pay attention to during this process? Experience comes the first. Firstly, you can never see fire, obvious fire. Only smokes are natural here. And uh, you can touch the jar. If it's too hot, that means the temperature is too high. But if it's cold, if not so hot, that means the fire is off. You need to fire, uh, light the fire again. I think this uh, technique is very difficult for you. Yeah, I can see it's very difficult. It really needs years of uh, experience. Yeah, I've been in this industry since 2001. And I also did uh, this uh, simmering procedure, but I found it's really difficult. So I leave uh, this process to more professional, more senior masters. You should learn it. In the future, you will also need to teach your apprentices. Yes, I gradually learn from the seniors. And when I'm getting older, I will take this part. And then you will be the senior. Yes, I need to think about it and learn from it. Because uh, it's uh, very difficult to, to catch fire to a certain level and uh, to keep yourself safe. Many Chinese cuisine attach great importance to the fire. So this takes two days. So today we cannot enjoy this wine. But we have some ready wines. You can have a taste. You see? These have been simmered, you see, from the jar. It's cooled off now. After cooling it off, and we take it out, like in some during some weddings or during the spring festival, we will sell some of it, and uh, the re we will store the rest uh, into the warehouse. And uh, the alcohol will be purer and purer after storing. And these are new wine. So the taste of the wine is different according to its storing period, right? Uh, this is very new. It's the color of the stinky rice. And this one is uh, has has put for months. The left one is the latest. You see the color is uh, similar to the stinky rice and after a while the color will change. And uh, after another while it uh, will change to black. This one is newly brewed. This one is uh, two years, and the black one is after five years. So you see the color changes. So why the color becomes darker? Because the ingredients in the stinky rice is very special. It will continue to ferment. And as long as it continues to ferment, the color changes. So sometimes some of our customers 
bought the sticky rice wine back home and take it and leave it for a while. After a few years, they would complain to me saying that the color is different. Does it go bad? Some people would buy a lot of sticky rice wine and they thought this is a uh, since I've already here. Uh, I might just bought a lot of wines and sometimes they just leave it there and forgot that they've already got those wines. And I remember that there is there is this customer who bought 40 jars of sticky rice wine and at a few months, the be at the beginning few months, he called me saying that the color is different and he didn't know that when the color it's darker. The taste of it is even better. So let me try. So this is a freshly brewed rice wine. It's sweet, very sweet. Yeah, since it's a very good brewed sticky rice wine, if you didn't handle it well, it might go so sour. It doesn't taste hot at all because freshly brewed sticky rice wine will taste sweet and a little bit fragrant of the rice and also of the wine. Okay, now let's try the two-year sticky rice wine. It's only the one fragrant, fragrant left. Now I can taste a little bit of the wine hot taste. Because it's already two years old, you don't feel the 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 fire t smell and also the rice smell. You feed you see that the 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 wine body is thicker. Now let's try the old sticky rice wine. It's five years old. It looks just like some kind of Chinese medicine. How does it taste? It's stronger. You can taste the alcohol inside it. Because as long as the water distilled, the more alcohol will be left. And you can feel this good smell after mouth. I think a lot of girls would prefer the freshly brewed rice wine because as the wine gets older, the alcoholic content will go up, so men would prefer the older rice wine. Some people who just started drinking and some women who don't like to drink, they would prefer to drink this freshly brewed sticky rice wine because it tastes more like rice soup. Yes, it's very mild, but if, if you drink it, you would drink it as a soft drink and you would underestimate the alcoholic strength. There is a kind of rule when you drink it. When you serve the drink, you would serve some snacks beforehand to, uh, to fill your stomach. If you just drink it immediately and take it as a water, then the alcoholic strength will make you get dizzier and dizzier. During Spring Festival, does every household drink sticky rice wine? Yes. Yes, exactly. So women drink um, this wine during their the month in confinement because uh, many years ago, the countryside was very underdeveloped, and the fresh, uh, this sticky rice wine, it was very nutritious. So we use this sticky rice wine to 
cook with egg and make this egg sticky rice wine soup for those pregnant women. But they are still very precious, so we wouldn't drink it every day. We just drink it during the festivals. That's why we called that women drink it during the confinement and men drink it during the festivals. I heard that a lot of visitors or people from other uh, villages would also come here to buy this kind of sticky rice wine. And I see it listed on the wall that there are a uh, uh, customer base layout. Some visitors would fly, uh, take the flight to come here. At that case, you cannot take it on board. So we will have delivery service. We will pack it all well and then deliver it for you. I see that we also have a lot of overseas customers because a lot of Hakka people went abroad and they went to Taiwan or they went to the Southeast Asia region. Does it mean that a lot of overseas Hakka people will come here to buy these rice and go abroad? Yes, exactly. There are um, Hakka Chinese. Um, there are a lot of people like 500,000 people and some some of them were just thinking about that maybe I would go back and pack these um, sticky rice wine and go with me. And some of them cannot afford to come back, then they would just buy it from the e-commerce platform. Some of these old um, sticky rice wine gets col uh, red color. And I see that a lot of overseas Hakka people don't get to drink this authentic sticky rice wine. And then they got nostalgic. I understand that uh, some of them cannot drink this old sticky rice wine. And maybe they can buy some um, freshly brewed sticky rice wine from other household, from other brew house. This authentic sticky rice wine has different taste. That's why a lot of people come here and they say to me that your sticky rice wine tastes different from my household because that is because my sticky rice wine, it's simmered with small heat and you use a higher heat. And that's why your wine would taste sour. I also know that during the Spring Festival month, drinking sticky rice wine is very important. That's why we've prepared a video demonstrating how you spend your Spring Festival. Now, let's see this video. Before I sieve this sticky rice wine, okay, let's wait a moment. You just mentioned that sticky rice wine is very important for Spring Festival. In your life, in your Hakka people's life, I know that food is also you also use sticky rice wine to make food. Now let's visit uh, Hakka house. But before that, uh, let's watch the video first. In 2008, Tulo was listed in the UNESCO. And this Tulo in Hong Kong village is the most famous one. And one of the most famous Tulo is called Zhengcheng Tulo, and it is dubbed as the Prince of Tulo. Each year at the first day of the lunar calendar, we will open the Tulo gate, and that means that we enter into the new year. Um, it's the household, it's a house master of this Tulo.
we pay our tribute to the god. During this period of time, we will express our sincere aspiration of the new year. And then we will play the firework and buckles. Tulo emerged because of uh, the Han people, they migrated from Central Plains. Because they are not familiar with this place, they chose to gather and live together. So a big house which can include hundreds of people emerged. In this village, the um, group people with the family name of Lin is a very large group. On the first day of uh, the new spring festival, they will wear in red and they will pray the guard. And this one is a very famous palace here. And they will dance, they will take the dragon dance. And after praying to Mazu, they will go back home and prepare for the dinner on the spring festival. And this one is Zheng Cheng Lou, it's Agen's house. He has a, a four story section with 10 rooms. His family lived here since his grandfather, and now here is a place of tourism. He made uh, 100,000 yuan in 2015, and he said the tourism here has um, made the people, the local residents, and farmers rich. As uh, they live uh, in the enclosed house uh, in groups, it's very warm, and because there are still many people, they work in other cities. There are only 15 families in this house, but on the spring festival day, it's still very warm and uh, hospitable. Uh, although they've uh, left from the central plains, they still keep the customs and the tradition there. After 100 years of uh, history, they gave birth to babies, and uh, they generated more people. But the tradition and the two laws still remain the same. Okay, from the video, we saw a very beautiful tu lo, that's the Zheng Cheng lo. S so the delicious food we want to have a taste is inside this tu lo. The name of this tu lo is Zheng Cheng, and there is a couplet on the door. Actually, on the gates of uh, many tu lo's, there are couplets, and the name of the two low is uh, embedded in the couplets. Let's enter in the two low. Just now, we visited a square one, and from the introduction of local residents, we heard that uh, this two low has a history of 106 years. It's very profound. And you see the decorations is mixed with uh, Western and uh, Eastern characteristics. 
You see the white decorations is very Western because many of the previous residents they traveled to Taiwan, they traveled to the West, so they combined the Western feature with uh, the East. This is the central hall. We can see some calligraphy. Many of them are training words and education words. As we are entering, we can see above the lines are very beautiful. So there is a square shape, there is a round shape. Now we are entering a small yard of the Tulo. Just now we mentioned every Tulo have uh, has different uh, families. This yard belongs to one family, and uh, these four stories belong to his family. On the first floor is uh, its uh, kitchen. Uh, some people transformed it uh, like a. Uh, he transformed this kitchen into shops. Uh, this one, the steel kitchen, is the clay oven. So let's have a look of uh, the Hakka food, which are made of rice wine. Hello. What's your name? You can call me Mrs. Wang. Wow. These are all made of uh, rice wine. Can we take it out so we can see it clearly? OK, let's take it out to the desk. You see the colors are very fresh. Is it too hot? Uh, there is a jar of uh, Hakka wine. wine. This is the tin pot. Tin pot is uh, very popular locally. You see, they've also decorated the yard. You can drink tea and uh, eat under the tree. He is uh, the leader in this Tulo. People call him Uncle Agen. Can you introduce the Hakka delicious food to us? This one is the Hakka rice wine. It smells really good. All this food are made of uh, rice wine. Please give me chopsticks. This one is uh, rice dumplings. And uh, we use ginger, we use brown sugar. In my impression, the rice bowl rice dumplings are very sweet. But if you add rice wine into it, the flavor is very different. Yes, we add 
fries fine. And it tastes very sweet. You can have a taste. Yeah, I'll have a bite of this sticky rice bowl with sticky rice wine. The rice bowl itself doesn't have any wine inside it. We use sticky rice wine with ginger and brown sugar to cook it. It has a very special fragrance. And the brown sugar, it's not that strong. The taste of it got alleviated a lot, uh, a bit. Okay, one I did rice ball, very special. How about this? This is fried egg soup. And you see the, the stuff floating on the soup? It's the fermented sticky rice. And we cool this. Uh, the taste of this fermented sticky rice is different before we put it in the jar. Please have a taste. Yeah, it is a little bit sweet and clear. And I can taste the smell and taste of the fermented sticky rice. And this fried egg, we call it por poached egg. And this, this is stoled chicken soup. We will put red dates and special oil and cook it with sticky rice wine. Yeah, I can smell a very strong sticky rice fragrant. That's why you need to use it to simmer. It is very tonic and very nutritious. We use half of the sticky rice wine to cook it. When it's done, we will add soup inside it and simmer it. And we also will add some ginseng and also ginger. In the countryside, when a woman is to give birth, we will give it, give this soup to her. I think not only the soup will have the taste of wine, the meat will also have the taste of it. Yes, it's very strong. And the chicken, it's also very tasty and it has the smell of the sticky rice wine because we need to stir fry the ginger and the red date with the chicken. And then we add this sticky rice wine and simmer them. Can I taste the soup? Will I get drunk? Of course not. Pregnant woman will drink a lot of this kind of soup without getting tipsy. I think if you can cannot drink, you will get drunk if you just drink the soup. Yeah, pregnant woman, after they drink this kind of soup, they will just take a nap immediately. It is very, very tonic. Because red dates is tonic, ginger is tonic, and also the, the fermented chicken. We will ferment it for a few years. Uh, for a long time, and they are all very tonic. What's the name of this dish? It's called ginger wine chicken soup. How about that one? And this is called fermented rice soup bowl. Can I also have a taste. Yeah, it tastes a little bit different. We, you can see that apart from this fermented sticky rice, you can also take a very strong taro smell. 
Yeah, it tastes stronger than that poached egg. Yeah, we will put less fermented sticky rice. Fermented sticky rice can be considered as a snack or as a dish. Do we eat this kind of dishes during our daily life? Yes. And for this kind of chicken soup, we only drink it during festivals. And for some important festivals or, for, or important events, we will definitely have this kind of chicken soup. And this is a must-have dish. And for this sticky rice bowl, we use it to uh, pray to the God or we will eat it during special occasions, such as the full month of a child. And this dish is a very often eaten one. So uh, when we have our meal, you will usually drink um, drink sticky rice wine. Yes, this tin pot looks a little bit old. Yes, I'll just drink a little. You can see that this sticky rice wine looks a little bit sticky. That's because it's an old wine. It tastes different. It's not usual sticky rice wine because we only use sticky rice to make it. And then we will also st steam it. Usually speaking, during festivals or if there are uh, visitors coming, will you, we will definitely drink Rice wine, right? Yes. In our local area, each household will have um, sticky rice wine, especially during winter solstices. We will definitely drink rice wine. So previously, it's like each household will brew rice wine, but Right now, we will appoint brew house to do it. During Spring Festival, all the family are united. And during dinner time, we, is there any table manner or table etiquette that we need to pay attention to? For Hakka people, we really pay attention to table manner. The table setting, for example, um, for the seat in front of the door is the main seat, and that's the master seat. And then the left side and the right side is the second one. We definitely should always have respect for the seniority. If you are the visitor, then we will firstly um, propose a toast to our visitor. It's very important. That's our respect for the visitors. And usually the junior will pay respect or propose a toast to the senior. Usually, yes, that's right. The juniors will pay respect or pay um, propose toast to the senior. And the senior will propose a toast to the visitor. Thank you so much. Now we have tasted the delicious rice wine and also this delicious food. What a good journey. So uh, for this tour load, the first floor will be the kitchen and will be public area. Can, can I go upstairs? Yes. Today I drank the Hakka rice wine and eat the Hakka delicious food. Now let's go upstairs to observe the Hakka structure, uh, building structure. From the outside and also in the video, you've already seen the structure of the Hakka Tulo. Now let's go inside to see the interior and we can see from inside to the outside. Currently, the 
uh, to low is well preserved and it maintained this wood structure. We see that the wall is painted, but the stairs and the fence keep the same. And you see that the window is very small and there are not that many windows because uh, the original function of Tulo is to prevent from invasion. That's why on the first floor and second floor, we don't have any window and the window is up very high. Okay. We are on the fourth floor of uh, the Tulo, and we can see the outside. We can see the circular shape and the lanterns. It's very beautiful. And there is an inner circle, and there is a square building. That's the central hall. Actually, in daily life, every family in Tulo, they gather in the yard and they live independently. But during the festivals, especially spring festival, they will enter the central hall together and have a gathering. And they will taste the rice wine and the delicious food together. That means reunion. OK, that's the end of today's live streaming. We really welcome dear audiences. If you have time, especially during Spring Festival, you can come here.